Mighty Maria and in by Marquinhos! Towering captain's header! In by De Bruyne all the way in! Morris, oh, it's a beauty! He has fisted in for Manchester City, who have come from behind and lead beneath the Eiffel Tower. So welcome back to Netflix Football on podcast with Neil and PSG versus Manchester City. Second leg, Manchester City lead. Sorry, I cannot be a bit more energetic, but a very, very bad cold. But still, the love for football. And the love for the game eclipses everything that 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 means the eye basically. So tonight joining us as panelists, a lot of new folks, a lot of new folks, guys. So let us bring them on screen right now. So with us tonight, we have the familiar face of Shanmuga join, joins us from that city match that, that he won. Nikesh, Amit, Anirban are debuting on Netflix football. First of all, I'll take Anirban's thought that I've seen your other podcasts in various other groups, but Coming on to Netflix footballs and podcasts with Neil, how does it feel, and especially in a crunch style like this? Um, it it feels really great, and I just got an opportunity to be in in your channel, and I am really happy about it. And I hope uh, I can express my feels for my club um, well in your channel as well. Absolutely, Nikesh. How 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 is the tension in the air tonight? Because Anirban is almost almost going to catch a heart attack any time soon. Oh, it's my first time joining any live session in this YouTube. So I had talked earlier to Son Muga and I was very nervous. But the intensity of this game, I cannot talk about it. And I am not confident about it either also. So <laughs> I, I can't tell you. But right now, it feels like I'm sitting in my pants. I can't tell <laughs> how nervous I am. Absolutely, there's no need to be nervous. So let let us check out the lineups in the meanwhile. So this is our Manchester City lineup: Ederson on goal, Kyle Walker starting on the right back slot, with Zinchenko on the left back, Ruben Diaz and John Stones the established partnership, Bernardo Silva, Fernandinho and Gundogan. Rodri misses out from that midfield. Riyad Mahrez, Kevin De Bruyne on the false nine role, and Phil Foden starts up top wide. Quick glance at the Paris Saint Germain lineup highlight. Headlines is that Kylian Mbappe is out of this tie. So Florenzi starts in the right back. Uh, of course, Kylian never starts on goal. I miss that. Florenzi with Diallo making out the fullbacks. Marquinhos and Kimpembe, the ever trusted central mid- center defensive pairing. Andre Herrera makes a comeback in the PSG midfield. Leandro Paredes, Marco Verratti sum up the midfield. Di Maria and Neymar on the wings with proper number nine on Icardi. Shanmuga, straight to you. How how do you feel the city line? How do you feel a city line? There were talks of Sergio Aguero starting, probably a swan song to him, considering he's leaving at the end of the season. Do you think that uh, City could have impacted from a positive striker? But then again, it's Pep Guardiola, isn't it? Ah, uh, yeah. So first first of all, I want to be very sure uh, Sergio Aguero uh, will not be starting in a big game like this as of now, uh, considering his match fitness and everything. Uh, the Crystal Palace game is where uh, finally he found some mojo and he made some uh, very good link up with the midfield and finally he scored a superb goal as well. So uh, maybe hopefully uh, if everything goes well, he can play some uh, minutes in the final uh, if that everyone everything goes well. But coming back to the lineup, uh, we know Rodri is going to be benched up because he played full 90 minutes in the last two games and Fernandino was uh, substituted early in the uh, Palace game. So we know this is going to happen. Uh, but uh, I was expecting uh, Jesus in it in some way. But that being said, we couldn't drop any of the uh, current midfield and attackers there. Uh, so I'm, I'm happy with the lineup. Maybe would have liked Laporte instead of Stones a bit. Uh, since Stones has been a little bit erratic in the last few weeks, uh, but he was very good in the first leg. Uh, hopefully, he uh, he uh, use has the same form. And Zinchenko again, uh, he is there on merit. Uh, Cancelo would have been an obvious choice, but Zinchenko is there on merit because of his performance so far. 
and the way he changed Absolutely. the game in the first leg. Absolutely. Pretty clear on the lineup, but I'm just going to you very. I mean, going to you straight. The P- looking at the PSG lineup, it's it's an understatement that Kylian Mbappe is not starting, and any club in the world would miss Kylian Mbappe not being in the lineup. But the person replacing him, Mauro Icardi, has been hit and miss many times this season. So, uh, do you think Moise Keane could have actually started up top in, instead of Mauro Icardi, or just talk us through through the change? I would prefer uh, Keane over Icardi because of his uh, athleticism. You know, his fast. He he presses well in the front. So I I would prefer uh, Keane over Icardi, but. Icardi has experience in Inter. He is he's a box to box player. I think, I think I uh, it's a good, uh, good choice. And uh, replay M- coming back to Mbappe. Mbappe, it's a big miss. Um, he uh, he was the main focal point of PSG till now. Even in Bayern, even in Barcelona matches, he was absolutely amazing. Yeah, that's a big blow. And I'm not happy with Herrera. Herrera coming here. Instead of Gano, I'm really disappointed about that. There, there are tough choices on midfield. Probably, I think Idrissa Gana K was suspended. If I'm not wrong, and I still got yeah, the metrics. He, yeah, yeah, Gana was more energetic in uh, compared to Herrera, but uh, I don't understand how Poch is going to uh, approach it. He, it's too defensive. I I would prefer um, uh, Draxler in the number ten role. He could easily link up with Neymar and Icardi. I think that would create more opportunities and more creativity. I think this is just parking the bus. <laughs> <laughs> lots of lots of things to talk about. But actually, talking about the two great managers on tonight, that on display, Pochettino and Pep, as we discussed in the last podcast, that it was something that they are used to. Maybe Pochettino with a different team, maybe with arguably a better team than his Tottenham. Thoughts for counterparts, but Anirvan, I'd like to ask you this against the master tactician in Pep Guardiola, which somehow came from, they came from behind some horrendous goalkeeping by Keylor Navas and some horrendous defending on the free kicks. Do you think that actually Pochettino has got the metal to actually drop down that bottler kind of a frame that he has been entitled with and actually repeat PSG's final statistics and like last year and go one step better, Anirvan? uh hopefully hopefully because um because last time the mistake we have made that w- in the f- in the first half we played really attacking and in the second half all of a sudden we started playing very defensive and if we play this time defensive like the last time we are not going to i mean win this tie and go to the finals so we have to play attacking in the both um, halves and throughout the game so th- then he can i mean remove the status of bottler i think so <laughs> quite an interesting question i think raman's question was answered that how does he see clubs uh, i mean uh, pochettino's future with the club so maybe as as anirvan said that it just has to go one step higher Thoughts about Icardi, we'll discuss that in the tactical section. Mila, just stay tuned. Actually, going over to Nikesh. Nikesh, someone that I'm highlighting on screen right now, he is the epitome of Manchester City. He is has been there since more than a decade and that Aguero moment as a United fan broke my heart. And actually understanding the aesthetics of someone that is, Shanmuga is already smiling about that United about that Martin Tyler going up. Oh my God, I, my heart broke in 10 trillion pieces at that moment. Losing your the bloody title on goal difference. <laughs> anyway, this man has been out on the periphery since last season. He was on the goal scoring charts. Sad to see Aguero not leading the Golden Boot race. Others have taken over. So how much would it be a loss, Nikesh, from the Premier League of, to lose someone of Sergio Aguero's caliber? Considering... He moves to Barcelona, proposed, completes his proposed move to FC Barcelona at the end of the season. In case. Well, we did see how much we miss him in the starting half of this season, where we did not have a clear striker. And then Pep came with a new plan of false nine. But then also, 
He is a striker that can guarantee you 20 plus goals in a season when he is fully fit. So I think Klopp Klopp had the hardest uh, choice of replacing company, but uh, now this will be the hardest decision. And going into the market, I don't think we can replace him with uh, easy money. You know, we have to spend a lot of money, like 100 plus, on any striker. But uh, Sergio will be useless, I guess, in this team. And uh, I am disappointed that he is not uh, starting tonight. But you can't get uh, emotions run out of it. So, hey, let's see. Absolutely, Shanmuga. The same question going over to you. That being a talisman that he is, and something we have seen a tendency, which was evident in the first leg. We'll dive more into that on the tactical analysis segment. That Man City tend to pass too much in front of a goal, and lacking that that's understandable considering the start, the side play without a proper number 9 or a proper center forward so would you think in a crunch guy an experienced fighter and an experienced predator like Sergio Aguero would be missed but again it's Pep Guardiola isn't it so you never know if it's going to pull out an ace of his sleeve or just as Ole likes to say it that <laughs> you know what Ole likes to say <laughs> right <Chandra? laughs> I, uh, I know where you're going. But uh, Pep Guardiola is a coach who has benched Prime Lewandowski when he was at Bayern. Okay, so uh, an injury returning Sergio Aguero uh, <laughs> is, is, a bad, is a long shot, if you ask me. Uh, like I said, he is coming back to form. Uh, I, I think no City fan would have expected him to start today. Uh, but I wanted a proper number nine to start, maybe Gabriel Jesus, because he is better uh, he has been better for us in champions league last season as well and even in this season uh, but uh, by seeing the lineup you can never drop any of the other other players uh, not Phil Foden uh, not Riyad Mahrez obviously not Gundogan and KDB so uh, that's why i think uh, jesus or aguero has been pushed to bench uh, but he is going to be definitely missed and like nikes said uh, we cannot replace him with money and uh, nothing is going to do. And uh, playing false nine is, uh, is 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 a bit of risk as an all because uh, we know PSG are going to attack. And uh, the Herrera substitution uh, uh, starting is very interesting. Like I was expecting uh, Verati to go to, to go deep as well as and Draxler to start in the number ten. But Herrera means that he is going to man mark completely either KD, KDB or Gundogan. So that will be seeing in the, in the game who is he is man marking. We know how he does that when he played for United. So I know him, uh, under Jose Marino. So that is there, and uh, so he is there to man mark. So obviously, Poch is a little bit defensive. I would say here uh, instead of attacking, him, he wanted to counter attack. Uh, similar, a bit similar to approach how he uh, started in the PSG game. Sorry, in the Spurs game uh, two seasons back. But that time he had a lead. He had a goal lead. And this time he's a goal down. That's why I think this is a crazy problem. Quite interesting. And quickly, quickly going over to Amit over this now. From a PSG fan's perspective, I know the inclusion of Andre Herrera raises some questions. But trust me, being a United fan, I know all about him and the energy and passion that he brings in, as well as goals. Like he was probably the best playmaker in the Champions League final last season. If you Put in the number of times he played in Mbappe and Neymar. It was countless. Mbappe missed a, one or two sitters in front of Manuel Neuer. If I remember, and two of them were Herrera's pass where he was combining with Di Maria. And Amit, just asking you this. We have shifted our focus to Herrera. But someone on the caliber of this guy, Marco Verratti, is someone who impresses me a lot. Considering tactically, he's one of the most press-resistant midfielders at world football in this moment of time. One of the most versatile midfielders who can play any position with equal poise. And suddenly, you have a system where probably Herrera can play off the main striker where he has done and he can bring you that, those goals from long shots as well, which PSG would like to be testing. But what do you think with the like of Ander, likes of Ander Herrera and Marco Verratti? Would, would you think that it is a double piper considering Paredes who was shifting onto the back line quite a few times last in, in the first leg, would you think that this is ho hold what you have in the first half and then go for Gango? Maybe a Moise Keane 4-4-2 four, 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 in the second half? I, mean, I wanted Verratti to play defensive midfield 
and want uh, like Draxler, uh, Draxler to be in the uh, number 10 role. But now you, you have seen uh, Paradise making mistakes, like giving away the free kick for Mares and uh, uh, he, he, he opened up the wall for Mares to score. I think Paradise was the very weak midfielder there. It would be best to replace Her Her um, Herrera with um, Paredes, like Paredes with Herrera. And uh, I, I can see that Herrera is good in ma man marking and he, he's, he's good in pressing and he's very energetic. And when it comes to long range shots, he tries. Um, he's, a, he's a good player. Uh, I just want to say that. And uh, coming to Verratti, you know, he's my favorite and he's my favorite uh, PSG player. And you know uh, he can uh, if he's in the defensive uh, role, I think he could have controlled those uh, long balls and he could have controlled it the midfield. Now he's playing in the number ten role. He'll be more uh, he'll be more uh, prone to the defensive area. That's what I'm. Absolutely. So Raman Raman says that Raman has a lot of questions for Anirvan himself. So what do you think Poch should approach tactical in this match? Raman, just stay tuned for a bit. We'll enter the tactical analysis segment within the next 5-7 minutes. Before that, I'll ask Anirban this, that somewhere down the line, if you if I just highlight the average positioning of Pochettino, so this is what you get. Basically, this is what you get. I'll bring the Man City ones very soon. So this is the most used formation or the positioning under... Pochettino since he took over since Tuchel was sacked. So as you can see, okay, so sorry. So as you can see, <clears throat> there's a clutter in midfield. The central midfielders are in the center circle, mostly in the center circle, where you can expect, and probably if you see the AM, Neymar will be playing out wide. So the likes of either Herrera or Verat, whoever, I have a gut feeling that Herrera might start number 10 and just man mark Fernandinho out of the game because if you stop Pep Guardiola's Defensive midfielders, you are already one step up. So, having the three in that midfield, do you think this Pochettino goes for a cluttered midfield option and actually attacks through his fullbacks more often than not? So, and But against Manchester City, you are experts in actually distributing the ball. Do you think that's a good plan, Anirban? Mm, through, uh, after the taking, uh, after Pochettino took over, the position of Tuchel, he is uh, using this uh, this formation. But in uh, if you look at uh, if you look at the Champions League, what he has done is he placed more of a defensive. Uh, I mean, he used the team as defensive, and we went most of the time in the counter attacks and scored scored goals. So I am not big fan of this um, approach of uh, approach of Pochettino. I feel uh, we should play more attacking because we have the players who can attack actually. And I'm not happy with uh, his some um, his some options which he took after taking over, like he, how he is using Varati as the number 10 position. I feel Varati should play in the defensive midfielder along with Paredes or Herrera and Neymar should shift to the attacking midfielder position and uh, and and in place of Paredes there should be uh, Draxler who should play uh, from the wing and in the uh, and the question of uh, there was a question from you that uh, do we use more wing backs? Uh, so I feel no, we do, do not use wing backs more because uh, I never seen them uh, in attacking roles most of the time. That's quite an indigenous answer. <laughs> Anna says <laughs> coming with the thought. What are your thoughts on the PSG answer? Park Tepas. Some banter in the house, right? And then going over to what Shanmuga said that required a lot amount of not even money can replace Sergio Aguero. Come on, you're a Manchester City fan. Money can replace anything. Okay. Not Sergio Aguero. <laughs> oh my god. By Holland, you'll forget about Sergio Aguero in an instant. Okay. Shanmuga, moving over to you. 
apart from the banter this is actually manchester city's most used positioning sense and as you can see all everyone in what we say in bengali a khichudi which which means all everything scrambled like the genius that pep guardiola is see the left back position see the right back position see the left winger forward all spamming the the the, the half spaces or or the zone 14 if jibakta is watching this he'll butcher me for for mentioning half spaces but again then it's pep guardiola who thrive the bloody guy thrives on half spaces in zone 14 so again with this ploy i'll bring up the tactical segment in just a bit do you think that this approach this especially this approach with as you can see the left winger right winger the forward and the attacking midfielder is something that pochettino has looked at and actually gone with a three man three man midfield instead of a number 10 but a 433 sitting midfield to actually counter this manchester city spamming of the half spaces to stop the half spaces basically sanmuga yeah actually coach did it uh, in the first half of first leg he actually did it and if you see uh, this average positioning and the average positioning of our first leg game alone uh, the inverted full backs role was not there and uh, we, the the full backs were more conventional uh, and in the first half uh, uh, we were uh, uh, we were easily outnumbered by psg and they, they were very good uh, i think it's uh, not inverted it it is underlapping inverted is different what you okay. meant the runs that we were making inverted is something that the wingers are like you play a left footed winger on a right wing that is inverted what is what you're trying to say i guess is that they what jo cancelo and uh, zinchenko does is underlap a lot not overlap yeah, so they come inside the midfielder whatever right. the technical word is that, that's <laughs> the, underlap both footballs, yeah both the full backs join the defensive midfielder so that it, it becomes a line of midfield of three and that shields and the two center backs at the back and that's why we were able to cope up with a lot of counter attacks mainly uh, so this is uh, this is a bit old but in this season we are doing it at it a little bit differently uh, initially we did 4 to 3 1 that wasn't working and uh, after that uh, pep tweaked a little bit bringing in cancelo and uh, made a few changes and now this is looking fine and even today i feel that wouldn't be the case uh, again uh, it's going to be a little bit conventional sinjeng was going to be hugging the uh, sideline i believe uh we shall see yes. but uh, as you can see see the clusters there that's because uh, every player of manchester city uh, both in midfield as well as attack uh, can play every position so uh, that is why the cluster is uh, like that and even if you see the most advanced player is not the striker is it's is a left winger mostly field for yes. us in the case and uh, yeah. and that is why i was expecting gabriel jesus because he wouldn't be a proper sergio aguero he wouldn't uh, be in the uh, penalty box more he would drop or he would drop in and uh, help the midfield and that is why i thought he would have been better with him uh, but either more now uh, bernardo silva or kdb is going to play the position so uh, uh, i don't know how it is going to come up uh, but by just seeing the lineup i believe we have uh, an advantage already uh, he is going a bit defensive if we manage to uh get a herrera out uh, of man marking right. i think we should get enough spaces <laughs> to, to attack herrera is the talking point okay and to, talking yeah, about so, talking because so because what? variety is not used like like uh, every other page if i said the players have it they have the technicality uh, to uh, dominate any opposition be it bayern or be it manchester city or barcelona they can do it. and the coach is a little bit defensive <laughs> and <laughs> again i'm not being the whole segment once again so okay talking about talk, talking about trending topics just a quick shout out to tonight's sponsors they are wise sims as you all know they are a digital marketing agency which sponsors me number one and number two they are very good at promoting your business so if you're looking to grow your business on the online segment of the digital forum wise sims is the place to go contact them where at net at yaar bar bar netflix football bol deta hu dusron ka promotion karte i i promotion i promote myself So you can contact them on Instagram at Wise Teams Kolkata. Just just go there and say that Neil has sent you. Thora commission mil jaye to baat dunga chalo. Thora charity work bhi kar dunga. <laughs> so okay. So going back and going to the most important segment of this show is the tactical analysis, and I am sure that all of you have been waiting for this specially, and this is the USP of the show. 
Anirvan has been in a lot of places. So Anirvan, this one's for you. So <clears throat> this is at the three minute mark between PSG and Man City. Now, this is for all of us, right? So, so see how deep Paredes drops. See the positioning of Verratti. Not a number 10, but a wide midfield or an LCM kind of role. Idris Aganage, where probably Paredes is going to play. Check the positioning of Di Maria over right here. Neymar Mbappe, all central. Trying, what I feel is, they're trying to actually box in City. That's what Poch do. And the fullbacks are the only ones that are actually open in, in open spaces. So Anirban, with relevance to the question that Raman asked that, how, no, 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 not this, not this, not this. Where was that question? So, okay. so, yeah, what should, what approach should tactic, should be done tactically in this match? Yeah, Anirban, take it over the stage. Uh, I think the tactic is quite going to be quite the same and uh, but this time i think neymar is going to play as the cam and the left midfield position more and how uh, and as always uh, uh, as always uh, kim pembe and marquinhos is going to hold the back line and uh, Herrera will be used as uh, as as how Ghana was used. He will pass the ball to the forwards or the other players, and Di Maria will be playing as a kind of wing back. He will, if you if you have seen the matches, he uh, plays. He sometimes he comes to the. Uh, back positions as well as uh, sometimes he uh, just uh, tackles and takes the ball so puts in a lot of work rate. puts in a lot of work rate, yes and uh, that's i think how it's going to be okay uh, amit has been qu awfully quiet for a long time amit i'll ask you the same thing essentially considering the fact that what anirvan just said that they play basically, Di Maria drops a lot, a lot, essentially. So, but I kind of disagree with that considering the fact that that is Pochettino's actual favoured setup of building from deep. So, do you think that this is something which will be a repeat of what we saw on the first leg, PSG being, trying to box in City and actually being falling into their own trap? Like the first 20 minutes, it was really great how they played, but physiologically they lost in the second half. You can see that uh, Paredes is going uh, going between those uh, centre-backs and looking for the passes. And you, you can see that Di Maria is like, a, he goes back, he comes and he goes in sometimes. And you know that Marquinhos is very good in long passes. So I think Porchentino is trying to build up the same thing from deep to, to the counter-attack part. And you can see that uh, uh, Paredes is very deep. He doesn't actually do anything but just defend between those two centre backs. And and uh, Neymar being a, Neymar just moves around those areas from the uh, left position to the inside. Even Di Maria sometimes he creates space for Florenzi in the the right position. And and uh, Barker uh, he doesn't go forward. He's he has very less confidence going forward. And, yeah, that's it. And and I'm not satisfied with Verratti's number 10 position. And yeah. <laughs> The Axler should have started. <laughs> we yeah, have heard Draxler. that one before. <laughs> yeah. To create more chances, you need Draxler. You know, he can link up with Neymar or uh, uh, Icardi. Now we don't have pace of Mbappe. Now it's really hard. Even it's uh, easy for uh, Man City to uh, count, uh, what do you say, defend against this Con contrary to that, I'd say that P Pochettino has put in an intelligent lineup, considering that if you put in Draxler over there, your midfield is open, and once your midfield is open, Manchester City was going to pass you to death. So three industrious midfielders in Paredes, Berati, and Herrera, I think, are going to do a lot of dirty work, a lot of running. But I think that if PSG have to win this game, they have to win this game. If <laughs> so they these three have to start picking. Nikesh, but over I, to I, you. Yeah, yeah, go on. I didn't want Paredes to start. I would have uh, 
liked uh, Danilo to start because he has height and he's go- he has a good work rate. And you can see Paredes he, sometimes he doesn't he he's very inactive in those areas. That's what I'm gonna tell. And he made a foul uh, in the uh, and gave a free kick and and even yes. opened up the wall for the second one. Yeah. My my choice initially would have been Idrissa Gana Gay because I'm a huge fan of him. People underestimate and underrate him with the amount of quality he has, and he, he is bang on an intrinsic part. But I think he is probably injured, if I'm not wrong. And Danilo no, no. probably is. Un- he he was uh, he got a red card last night. He was sent off. Huh. He was he was Danilo. sent off, right? No, Danilo. And, uh, no, no. Uh, Idrissa Gana Gay. Idrissa was sent off. Danilo is probably unfit. If I'm not wrong. No, no, he is okay. No, no. But uh, he played against uh, the last league match, I guess. Yes, uh, against against Lens, Lens. Yeah. I think there he might be some good, problem. He, he is good actually, but uh, the thing is, he a bit he is a bit slow. But on the other aspects, he is really good. From uh, heading, from passing, from everything even in now, de- defensive duty he is good to answer actually amit's question is that i would not want to play this to start but i understand pochettino's vibe over here is that he wants an industrious midfield that runs around and that's the only way again going to sanmuga's favorite oligana solskar quote that you have fred and mctominay bossing the city midfield over the last three uh, two, uh, over the last three games that we faced in the league and even though they are so much limited they have done that very efficiently and that is how they kept city out by closing those half spaces by being at every point of contact what we call strategic uh, transitions in, in and around the box they have done that and essentially if you see the second slide it's it's how P- city attack see there is one player at every half space conjuncture why because that helps in transition and whenever you're in a half space the transition there, there's statistically a 35% chance average on an average that results in a goal because you're already unoccupied so see cancel of pressing so high city does this very often but the only downside to this is I'll ask Nikesh on this is that that whenever city have pressed like this remember there's a certain Luke Shaw who rampaged through your midfield and then scored the goal so <laughs> just because a Man United fan bias, outside of that, don't you think this approach runs that risk of a counter attack if executed properly? Well, you see, during the first half, City were pressing four to four. I guess, uh, yes, they were pressing four to four, and whenever uh, Foden used to go into the press, then there was wide open the right side. So in the next half, City used to press four four two. And uh, in the first half, Cancelo was uh, caught two uh, v one against, I guess, Florenzi and not no, as uh, Florenzi and Di Maria. And so, yeah. uh, when he was countered, uh, he also got a look at, I guess, he tackled Neymar. So when we press four to four, we usually were our uh, poach usually uh, outclassed uh, Pep. But uh, when we uh, pressed four four two, so we had that Bernardo running forward with De Bruyne and uh, it uh, dragged uh, uh, Baker to Bernardo. So, Mahrez had uh, left uh, had been left wide open so he can shoot and after that we created chances. So, in the second half, uh, Pep, half-time team talks are really great. Uh, they changed the moment <laughs> of the game completely. And uh, so, so, we just have to hold for... 30, 35 minutes. That's where we usually lost the game, lose the game in the UCL quarterfinals. So if we can take out that press in the first 30, 35 minutes, then I guess we can control the game. Well, absolutely. And for taking out the press, I think oh, those three have started. Going before going to Shanmuga on this is that now I'll take Minal's comment. Is that thoughts about Gundogan? I I, I need to share the lineups just to explain this. Is that Hello, I've got it. Just the attacking half. Now, most of you have watched the Ranjit Bajaj video where he explained half spaces and zone 14. 
is that Manchester City had to all the new newcomers on this channel. I'll just explain what Zone 14 is. Is that in a Manchester City training session, someone sent a drone and actually saw all the pitch marked with numbers. And the Zone 14 is exactly the space outside the goal if you box. That is the space between two half spaces. So if you consider this as the half space, so this space is the Zone 14. And now Ilkay Gundogan is someone who is an expert of this position, who is absolutely an expert of this position. Since his Borussia Dortmund days, we have seen Ilkay Gundogan being and thriving in and around those spaces, making late runs. And see the importance of this lineup. You have one, two, three, four, five people who thrive on half spaces. Now, the, cl the clutter that I showed you two or three images back, if I can have that right now, that clutter actually signifies how much of this team is dependent upon half spaces. Just, just see to this. So this is the one. See where, see the position of Ilkay Gundogan in making that late run. All those half spaces inside, all those half, all those runs in behind. Ilkay Gundogan has one at one point of time was in running for the Golden Boot race because he came late into the box and scored simple tap ins or simple finishes or intelligent finishes, and that's what makes him a very valuable player. Any any squad would love to have, right, Sanmuga? Of course, of course. Uh, it, it's a well-made point about this house space. Uh, if you ask Pep Guardiola, he can talk, uh, I think, a whole day about this. Uh, that mm -hmm. is why Pep Guardiola likes David Silva. Uh, he is the king of it, to find that space. And uh, Gundogan has been developed in this position in this season more often than the previous ones. Uh, usually, he, is, he, he drops a bit. But this season, he has been given the freedom. Uh, although, uh, I think today it's going to be a different kind of a role for him, uh, while KDP would be taking up that kind of a more attacking prowess, but he is going to be influential. Definitely going to be influential, particularly if we consider a goal earlier, then uh, City would be pushing for a goal uh, for a goal there. Uh, so, yeah, Gundogan to say has been enormous in the season. Like you said, he has scored important goals, and those were easy goals. It looked like, but he made them look so easy. Uh, so. And uh, not just that, uh, the uh, effect of Gundogan there, uh, uh, controlling the tempo of the whole game is there. So we normally talk about Cruz doing that, but Gundogan yeah. is right there. So he, he does that. He does the different duties that goes unnoticed. Even Kevin Kevin De Bruyne uh, does those duties that goes unnoticed because of the attacking style Pep Guardiola has. And uh, yeah. those things, the defensive attributes of every other player, uh, starting from Phil Ford and uh, at the forward line, that goes unnoticed, most of it. And uh, I wanted to add one more point regarding the previous uh, question you asked with Nikesh. Uh, that looks a goal. Uh, that, that is uh, a pattern, I would say. Uh, Cancelo, uh, yeah, this one, exactly. Uh, so, this is an excellent uh, point, actually. So, Cancelo getting out of position and he's being targeted in that wing. Be it the left uh, left wing or the right wing. Uh, Loksha scored the goal that uh, in that way. And uh, Chelsea also scored the goal, only goal in that 1-3 win for us at Etihad. In the last minutes, uh, Havertz assisted to... Uh, Shanuka, I'll just cut you off for one second. Is that we have seen, see, whenever wherever Cancelo plays, that he has been in out of the lineup for that reason. Is that he, he presses so hard, right? People at teams actually set traps, the right wingers or the left wingers. In in the Luke Shaw case, you see Rashford coming in so deep after holding his position, and now in this area you can see Di Maria driving in so deep and catching cancel in, and that just one touch ahead. You see already when Di Maria drops, Neymar is already on the move, expect knowing that the pass will be coming and there is space behind Cancelo. Do you think that as you said, this is being targeted? Do you think that is the proper reason of his exclusion from the squad tonight? Shanmuga? Okay, Shanmuga has bailed. Amit, would you just take up that point? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, I think that, that's a very clever change because he, he used to press uh, Di Maria and there would be create a lot of space in the uh, for Neymar to run through. So, uh, who's the other left back there? The the right back is Florenzi. It's Foden. It's Phil Foden. Otherwise, so if you no, have no, other left back, left back. I don't know the city properly. I don't know. 
Zinchenko. Zinchenko, please. Yeah, I heard he's a very good uh, defensive uh, right uh, left back. Uh, he's back, I guess. He is in. A, yeah, Shanmuga, just just uh, carry on. Ah, yeah. Sorry, I was dropped out. So, uh, like you said, that that is the reason why I believe Cancelo has been dropped today, uh, and Zinchenko can do that uh, kind of a role a little bit better. He's not fast, uh, but he has an insane, insane aerial ability, which also goes unnoticed. If you see the aerial duels won by Zinchenko, I'm sure it will surprise most of the people. Uh, and just check out the chats, <laughs> stats, I say. So uh, this way, this is a pattern actually, and uh, uh, Pochettino will be uh, looking to uh, attack in that pattern. As we can see in this first lineup, I, I can see a lot of uh, similarities between Pochettino, Spurs, and PSG here. If you say De Maria yeah. draws back and uh, and building from deep, it used to be a sound for uh, Spurs. Absolutely. So he Absolutely. does it in the other side. He does it in the other side while De Maria does it in the uh, opposite wing. So I essentially, Son started as a right right winger for for when he used to play under Pochettino, didn't he? Interesting yes, yes, similarity is there. He actually did. Uh, even in the league game that they defeated us, he started on the right wing. So uh, and I then we came to know his right. actual weak foot prowess that he was two footed because he used to cut in from the right wing and then shoot. <laughs> exactly. You know, yeah. So Pochettino has has instilled that kind of a mentality here, but. He has a better players. Yes, he could have done better, but he sticks to his principles. Uh, so uh, hopefully this time we can come out best. We had the chances last time, and we didn't take it. I and we got some two. Uh, we got the deserved victory there, but both the goals scored as of uh, as we all know, uh, goalkeeping mistake and and, and uh, both are errors. But anyway, we deserved it, and this time we'll be knocking the door again. I'm sure of it. Absolutely. So. Around 15 minutes to go for the kickoff, so I'll just leave with the predictions right now. Starting off with Amit. Amit, uh, how do you think the match is going to turn out, number one? And do you think that okay? So Owen <laughs> says we've been a panelist in the last podcast. So Neymar for hat trick tonight. Amit, what do you think? No, 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 <laughs> no, no. I think uh, star player would be Di Maria tonight. Okay, that's an interesting thought. Uh, The first twenty minutes would be a very crucial for PSG because you know the high pressing and the counter attacks and the fast pace of Neymar and uh, linking up with Icardi and Di Maria. I think uh, with the first twenty minutes, if we score a goal, I think we can we can do this. Okay, Amit, crazy crazy analogy over here, but let us assume that Di Maria starts out on the left wing and Herrera starts out on the wide right, which he has which he used to play for Athletic Bilbao. In that midfield diamond, he knows that position, and Neymar and Icardi actually play up top. So basically, if that happens, might be a trick up from Pochis team. We don't know. So what happens is that PSG revert to a four-two-two-two or a four-four-two, whatever you might want to call it. And what this enables is two things. Number one, I'll, I'll ask Amit's opinion on your opinion on this is that City, whenever they are stretched, they don't like it. City, whenever they are stretched. They essentially don't like it, but what happens is that it leaves behind a cluster of space for them to exploit. So this is like chitty chitty bang bang. So it's like five five six six goal line if if this continues with minimal defensive introspection. So I mean, would you think that this might be a case that Pochettino looked at and this might consider in some transition during the match to actually? Cat City of God. I didn't get your point. Why? Why is the space over here? Hmm. When they have the ball or without the ball? This is starting from a goal kick for, okay. for PSG. So this is an attacking transition. So if they line up like this, so do you think that City they might just catch City of God in this in this transition? I don't think this will happen because you know Paredes will be very deep with the centre backs this time, and uh, I don't think this is going to happen. Okay, so I'll leave you to all the predictions. So, what, what do you think is going to be the prediction for tonight? Three nil PSG. Three nil PSG. That's some bold predict predictions right now. Nikesh. Okay, Nikesh has now. 
यार क्या हो रहा है सिटी फैंस का कमिंग एंड गोइंग कम ओके शनमुगा बिफोर यू वैनिश वन से यार थैनो स्नैप कर रहा है क्या बीच में ऐसे ऐसे हर बार तो पीपल आर वैनिश ओके माय प्रेडिक्शन इज गोइंग टू बी आई थिंक इट इज गोइंग टू बी अ 1 1 uh i think uh, psg will go, will score first and then we'll mm-hmm. score a goal and uh, i think we'll see out the rest of the game so and that's man what city i think that's what i hope and that's what i pray to the world man city's first champions league final in their history you'll know what it feels like then okay nikesh your predictions for tonight's match uh i'll go with 1 1 i just hope we can't any card because uh, usually the less talk player or the less signed player sign against us you can see oxley chamberlain and uh, last season to adam matraore and lorente he scored a goal against us and knocked, knocked us out so i hope we contain ikadi and i will go with 1-1 okay all city fans are uh, anirban is sweating pigs like a pig right now so <laughs> what's your prediction uh, my prediction would be 2 nil for psg i so all op- optimistic oh. fans here tonight <laughs> hope for no jinxing and one thing uh, raman bhai i was asking that uh, what will happen hmm. to poch if we cannot qualify for the final so i feel um, he will be given some chances i mean he will be given another season i feel and mm-hmm. if he still cannot i mean reach the success then he will be <laughs> sacked <laughs> how others <laughs> how does antika do it ah, ah, like that no that was roman abro I, I i was Lampard. i was a bit uh, fan of tuchel um i am not a big fan of pochettino but i mean I, uh, Tuchel just uh, see how he is doing with Chelsea. <laughs> so I miss Tuchel. <laughs> Guys, man would have been would have would have been a showdown if Mourinho actually went to PSG. You know? Neymar versus Mourinho would have been, <laughs> would have been <laughs> would have kept the press up all night. By the way, those who don't know. Mourinho has been announced. Jose Mourinho has been announced as the new AS Roma manager starting next season. Paolo Francesco will not be continuing. So what essentially happened is, uh, <laughs> Solskjaer got Mourinho sacked from United and got the job. Then got sa- then <laughs> sacked him from Spurs. Then actually sacked the manager of Roma so that Mourinho could get a job. Come on, foot. This is this is total footballing heritage. Not just footballing heritage. This is total footballing heritage. And I've got nothing to say. Okay. So around nine minutes to go for the kickoff, guys. Thanks for joining in on such short notice. Let's hope that this is a good game. And probably I can see the nerve. City's maiden Champions League final on the line. They have already one foot on the pedestal with don't, two away goals. Do not jinx it, man. Do not jinx it. No, I'm not jinxing the the host. Never jinx the host. States facts. PSG fans again want to win that that <laughs> Illuminati of a trophy, and uh, they came so close last year. And let's so I can see Amit's already nervous. Anirban had been nervous before the, the tie was even decided. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh my God! Oh my God! On a tactical perspective, what I think is that. PSG are going to play on counters whether whether it's with Mbappe or whether it's with Icardi they are going to play on counters they will sit deep they will set traps and it's essential how Pep Guardiola has read that and played Gundogan because I think he didn't start the last match it was a Fernandinho and Rodri double pivot and Gundogan might just make those runs and might just catch PSG defense off guard but then again football is never played on paper and it is just hope the best team wins because out of both the teams very few out of both the teams none actually have that european pedigree but it's some time that what these teams are given their fair share crack at silverware and end the dominance of all those vintage clubs and actually stake a claim that yeah we guys are in it for you too so this comment that how does it feel like to be a psg fan how does it feel like to be a man city fan let's break those stereotypes shall we let's hope that it's a good game tonight thank you guys for joining in and we'll 
I am sure that one of these out of these, at least two of you will be joining me on the final. So let's hope for a good game, guys. Good night, and let's hope the best team wins. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you, guys. All the best. Bye. Bye. All the best. Bye. That was pretty much about it from podcast with Neil Manchester City versus PSG coming right up. And all of you guys, thanks for tuning in. And pata hai to hit that subscribe button. Maar lo jaldi jaldi. Need to reach 1200 subscribers very soon. Going very slow, but slow and steady wins the race. Not like Mbappe who is off to Real Madrid as it seems. By the way, some interesting news coming up. No surprise, right now. Though, chalo. So tomorrow it's gonna be Chelsea versus Real Madrid. Same time, same place. You all know. Again, a one-one draw with advantage and advantage Chelsea and with Eden Hazard's homecoming. We'll have the panelists, Starcast panelists as well. So my request to you: subscribe, mar do, reminder, mar do, jo marna hai mar do. Channel bada rana se ye. Show your love as you've been showing, and that's gonna be amazing. Chalo, let's hope for a brilliant match tonight and meet you on the other side very, very soon. Chalo, bye bye for now. Let's. I have got to work on my ending. <laughs> okay, this is podcast with Neil and your favorite host Neil on Netflix Football, keeping this at a premium. Bye bye for now. Let's hope for a good match and see you on the other side. Bye.